Do you want to go first or shall I go first? I'll go first. All right, you go first. Hello, I'm Stephen Yambo. I'm Senior Watch Specialist at Fellows Auctioneers. And I'm Carrick Matley, Junior Cataloguer at uh, Fellows Auctioneers. Right, so what's the first watch we've got? So we've got four that we're going to be talking about today. And the first one's going to be the Patek Philippe, uh, better known as the Spider due to its lugs. Um, it's a beautiful little thing, uh, 1952. And um, yeah, as, as far as dress watches go, I don't think you can uh, really get much better than that. Um, it's, it's about as simplistic as a chronograph will get and very much led the way um, to, to the chronographs we see today. Okay. Very much a classic design. Also, as well, it's in stunning condition for its year. It is really. I mean, we tend to see ones where the dials are completely ruined, or um, you know, the case uh, is damaged. But this one is is in pretty pretty good nick. Yeah, that's quite exceptional and a real rarity to find these days. Exactly. Um, so yeah, that's that's going to be coming up in our uh, in our next watch sale uh, for fifty five to seventy five thousand pounds. And um, we, we really hope that it's uh, going to reach those figures or, or more. Um, but we've also got things that steer into the, the modern era. Um, here we have an Omega Tourbillon. Um, this is a, a heavy hitter in terms of design and um, engineering. Um, it's got central Tourbillon, first one in the world. Um, what, what do you think about it? Well, when you say heavy, there's an awful lot of gold there. Yeah. It's a very, very heavy, substantial watch. But also, that tourbillon is absolutely stunning being in the middle. It's a real feat of engineering, like you said, to have the hands on rotating discs. So the feature of the watch is that stunning tourbillon. Exactly. It really pops out. And, um, you know, as you say, having all that gold in there might not be to everybody's taste, but it's definitely eye-catching. And it's, it's definitely something that, um, you know, is going to gain a lot of attention. Um, tourbillons, in terms of watches, you know, they always generate a lot of interest, as you know. Um, just really through their engineering and through what they what they do for a watch, um, in terms of you know helping um, negate all of the effects of gravity, um, and in today's modern times where people are steering towards digital watches, it's it's something that not only helps the watch um, achieve more precision, but is also something stunning to look at. And um, I think you could both agree that it's it's a eye catching piece. It's a real stunning piece of engineering. Exactly, and um, in our catalogue, um, it can be seen here that it's in the sale for thirty to forty thousand pounds, and um, that will be coming up soon on the thirteenth of August. Uh, another watch we've got coming up is the Amiga Speedmaster. This one dates from nineteen sixty two, and is a really rare reference. You really kind of like. Uh, only made 2,000 to 2,200 of these. Yeah, so it's a very limited piece. It's a piece. real limited piece. The condition is all original. It's got its original bezel and especially having its original bracelet. Yeah. Absolutely really rarity to get. And the icing on the cake is having that box with it. I really like the colour of bezel on this one as well. It's got quite a, a ghostly um, edge to it. But um, yeah, as you say, the the, the quality and the, um, the originality of it is, is amazing. Um, I mean, we've seen many um, Omegas, Speedmasters come through, and, and this is definitely one of the highlight pieces I think we've had, especially since I've been working here at least. True, we do have one in the cell as well, which is a bit more of a project that has no bezel to it. Yeah. But uh, with the 50th anniversary of the moon landings, there's been great, great interest in these Speedmasters, and it should do really well. Estimate is in £13,000, but considering the rarity of the watch, it should exceed that. Oh, fingers crossed. <laughs> also as well we've got coming up is a Tudor Monte Carlo. Original 1970s and for Rolex back in its day was a real avant-garde design. I mean it's so unusual for the Rolex house to have the date at six o'clock and also as well for its time. Really big watch. I mean it's 40 mils where you think the Daytona that was selling alongside was 36 mils. Mm. So for its day a really, really good uh, big watch. Yeah, it's, it's one of my personal favourite watches, um, especially in this sale. Um, I just love the dial on it. Um, obviously dubbed the name Monte Carlo because of the roulette tables, and um, that's what the uh, subsidiary dials on there relate to. But um, yeah, I think it's something that both catches the, the retro side of things 
and the, the sporty side of, um, of watches that everyone's steering towards today. True, that funky 70s design has become so popular. I mean, especially as they're doing a version in their current range of Tudors. So it's a watch that's really caught the public imagination. Really good to have that unusual bezel with the uh, gradings from uh, 1 to 12. Really quite unusual piece. Uh, screwing pushers. Basically, as chronographs go, it has absolutely everything. Yeah. They always say that Rolex uh, was the big brother to Tudor. Well, this really is the big brother to the Daytona. Yeah. The size of it being the 40 mils. Exactly. Well, this is coming up in the sale. Uh, this has got an estimate of nine to 12,000 pounds. And it is a real lovely piece with sharp edges, sharp lugs, never been polished, a real, real lovely watch. And if you were to choose one of these watches, one of the four, um, you know, money, no objects, which one would you go for? Despite the fact I do love the Patek, I think it would have to be the Speedmaster. Okay. A personal favourite watch of mine. I've always loved Amigas, and one that rare will be a real find. Yeah, I think the Patek would have to be the one for me. Um, not only just because it's the most expensive, but also it sits so comfortably on the wrist. It's just a, a complete you know, work of art, really. And, um, you know, it's something that I'd love to have in a collection one day. True, the quality of that watch really does speak for itself. It's an absolutely lovely piece. Exactly. And we're really lucky to get it. Yeah, we are. <laughs> OK, and um, that's been us talking about a couple of watches coming up in um, the uh, soon-to-be auction. Um, so any interest in these, um, feel free to see our website uh, or have a look in our catalogue. Yep, and we hope to see you on the 13th of August. Thank you. Thank you.